Hello and welcome to another episode of the driving vlog. Uh, thanks for joining me guys, I really appreciate it. Sorry I didn't get a, uh, a vlog out last week, but I didn't actually travel up to Cambridge. But yeah, today we'll be talking about all things Amazon and business. Uh, and me just like, just randomly talking about random thoughts, I guess, um, while I drive uh, to Cambridge. So yeah, last month guys went really well. I think I did something like 8,300 profit at the end of the day on Amazon FBA, which was pretty awesome. So, you know, my goal is to hit 10,000 a month. So I didn't quite hit that goal. Um, well, I've got a couple of mixed goals. My ultimate goal is to make 100,000 a year. So I'm pretty much on target for that. Um, and yeah, but I, for some reason I want to kind of hit 10,000 a month. So, which is obviously 120 a year. So, you know, last month was overall, I mean, you guys hopefully have seen the video. If you check out my channel, by the way, like, comment, subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Um, if you check out my channel, you'll see I did like a, every month I do like a, an income report, essentially. Actually, I probably could, should call it the income report, actually. Yeah, um, just showing how much I made. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, after all expenses and stuff, I think it was about 8,300 pounds. It's not too bad, really. That's just not too far off 100,000 a year. Um, so yeah, can't complain, but yeah. And last month, you know, it started off really well. I was on well on track for 10,000 a month, but then, you know, I had one bad week. I think it was the third week of April. Yeah, April, yeah. And, um, you know, it just slowed down a bit, but it's all good, you know, this is how it happens. And, you know, when hopefully when December comes around, I'll be absolutely crushing it. You know, December, my December goal, by the way, is something like, I don't know, 20, 30,000. So, you know, that's what I'm hoping to make in December. Um, and yeah, guys, December's crazy, by the way. So, one thing I am doing this month, I've made a decision in my business, quite a big change I'm gonna be making. And this is a decision I should have done ages ago, but I just wanted to, well, I just didn't get around to doing it, I guess. Um, and anyway, so one thing I wanna do this, this month, my goal for this month is totally to um, streamline my FBA business um, and also kind of extract myself from it as well and outsource as much as possible. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing is just trying to get on top of admin and things like that. Now I spent this week doing admin because I've got my VAT return due on the 7th of May. So not fun, but this is something that has to be done every quarter. It's not gonna go away. You know, invoices and stuff like that and reconciliation is a pain in the butt. Um, but yeah, so that is one thing I'm gonna be definitely getting on top on. And guys, by the way, I did a fantastic podcast episode, sort of interview thing with a guy called Callum who does uh, FBA, Amazon FBA. He's mainly wholesale. He does about 70% wholesale, I think 30% OA. But the main point of that episode though was more the fact that he is using AI massively to help him in Amazon FBA. And one of the things he uses um, AI for, like ChatGPT, AI type of stuff, is for using it for admin. I mean, he uses it for so many things, I can't even remember it all. Um, he uses it for everything, basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, he uses it for admin and like he can just dump an invoice on the AI and it will essentially, most of the time I assume, you know, sometimes it probably does mess up, figure out exactly, you know, what, where that should be reconciled against on the on a statement. So really cool stuff. I'll put the link up here, guys, so you can check that out. It's really, it's one of my, been in my, one of my, sorry, God, I can't talk today. It's been one of my most popular episodes so far just because I think the AI element brings it in, but also Callum's a really nice guy as well, so. And it's good to see someone uh, like at Callum's age, 19, you know, having that good entrepreneurial spirit and, uh, you know, hustling um, to better himself and, you know, doing a business. So it's always very inspiring to see that. I love to see people succeed. So that's a really good episode to watch. Um, but yeah, so that's something I'm gonna be working on is hopefully mostly getting all my admin staying on top of it you know throughout the, the quarter but also um, hopefully I'm going to be utilizing AI more I've started to learn more about AI and you know using that to make my business a little bit better now the sun was out earlier I had the aircon on nearly max and now the sun's just gone in a bit cloudy god it's a shame but hopefully it'll come out again I can turn the aircon down a bit now 
But yeah, so that's one of the first things I'll be doing is just getting on top of my admin. So it's much easier for me to do that. And you know, if I can't use AI for everything, I'm gonna get an admin VA again. I really regret letting my other one go. Um, I was in a bit of a cost cutting exercise because I wasn't, you know, I basically grew too quickly in terms of employees without having the, the profit to back it up. And that was a mistake I made back about, you know, seven, eight months ago. But yeah, so need to get an admin VA anyway. I really regret letting my one go. So that's kind of the first thing I'm going to be working on. Second thing I'm going to be doing is um, clearing out my entire apartment. Right now, I get most deliveries to me. I do have a unit. They kind of get delivered to me. And then I take them to the unit. I could get them delivered to the unit you know, where I prep and pack. But I don't want to give the people their access to my locker. So, you know, if you want them to receive deliveries, which they will do, but they need access to the locker and I don't want to do that. Um, I thought about having like an interim locker where they can put the stuff in and I take it out, but then, you know, it adds the cost. So just, you know, don't trust people as much as I want to. I heard some horror stories basically about storage lockers. Even though the place I'm in is great, not that I can tell you where it is. But yeah, um, yeah, just didn't want to do that basically. So that is one thing I'm going to be doing now. I'm going full-on prep center i don't want to see a so before we go on to that sorry i'm clearing out my apartment basically so i've got a load of ret mostly returns in my apartment but a few bits of stock as well i'd say it's about you know maybe about 40 percent you know stock that i can send in and 60 percent returns but i'm going to be sending all that stock into amazon now or putting it into my locker so those are the two things i want to clear out my apartment my apartment's been a warehouse for the past two years now doing Amazon, um, as I'm sure many of you can attest to and know exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah, I'm just fed up with it now, basically. So I wanna go, would we do, I wanna be doing more YouTube, more content, I wanna make my office look nice again. And, you know, a part of that is gonna be, you know, clearing out the stock. So, and just getting that either in the locker or sent in, basically. So. Yeah, and then obviously I need to get on top of my returns. I've not sold any returned items in a long time. I used to be quite good at putting them on eBay. Um, but yeah, I've not done that in a while. I've just been focusing on growth and getting new product. But unfortunately, the returns are piling up. This is the stuff that probably no one talks about, the worst parts of Amazon. You know, the, the two worst parts, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to Amazon is returns. Is the second worst thing, I think. And then the worst thing is the VAT returns every quarter. So, you know, an absolute pain. God, we're driving along very slow here. I've got a learner in front of me, followed by another slow car, followed by a uh, lorry. So we're doing like 10 mile now under the speed limit. Anyway, it's fine, because I'm chatting to you guys, so it's awesome. So yeah, next thing, going on full on prep center. So I want to get every single item of stock out of my apartment. I don't want to see a single item of stock in there. Um, or if I do bring something in, it comes in, it gets photographed or whatever, it gets taken out again. Um, so nothing, I don't want any trace of the Amazon business in terms of stock in my apartment, basically. That is my ultimate goal this month. So everything's getting cleared out. All the shelves in my uh, apartment getting taken down and then I'll just donate them or whatever, or whatever I decide to do. And yeah, and then going on full on prep center, basically. So. I've got two prep centers right now. I've got one called FA Prep UK, um, which is a really good prep center to be fair. I've used them now for two years. I've been on, on and off, you know, I've been with them for about two years. Sometimes I send them a lot of stock, you know, when I was doing Amazon maybe eight months ago, nine months ago, 10 months ago, I was using prep center all the time. To be honest, it's expensive. Prep centers are expensive. Um, and I've talked about this before, you know, last year, I got a bit discouraged because, you know, when you had two or three bad months, I'm going to say bad months, I'm still making like £4,000. But when you then spend £1,500 or £2,000 on prep, and then you've got another £1,200 in VA costs, and another 500 quid in software costs, all your profits go on paying other people, which is why I got a bit discouraged and kind of let everyone go and went back in-house. But now I just decided I want to keep growing now. I need to just suck up that cost of the prep centre. And yeah, I'm just going to go. So I'm using FA Prep UK. I am moving over, I believe. I'm not sure yet. I'm pretty sure I'm going to, but to a, a new prep centre service called Skuific, which is run by the Prof Protector Pro guys, the Bywell Pro guys, um, the Skuify guys. They're all the same company, like parent company, and they've started a prep centre. And they've got this great offer right now where it's 50p per item, no matter whether it's bundled or whatever, but you know, it needs polybagging. 
uh, whatever, it, whatever prep it needs, it's 50p an item. I think that is a, uh, this is going to last this year, that offer. So yeah, it's 9 95 a month, I think, or 9 99 a month, and then 50p an item. So pretty, not bad. I know guys have got, you know, some prep, some people have got prep super cheap. In fact, I know one guy who somehow has gotten a, I guess because he sends them a lot of volume, but he's got it down to like 20p an item. It's just crazy, it's crazy cheap. I don't know how the prep center is actually making money doing that, but anyway, um, as a general rule, 50p is pretty good. If you can get it down a bit, bit more, then that's cool. But yeah, not too bad. So going on full-on prep center, that's going to be quite an important step. And I just don't, so I don't want to see an item of stock again. The only thing I'm going to be dealing with, unfortunately, that I still need to figure out a good process for is returns. You know, most prep centers, there's no good service out there. Although Jacob, if you're listening to this, set it up where you can basically send your Amazon returns and they inspect them, you know, send, either send them back in for you or they grade them and, um, you know, whatever, and then sell them on eBay. There's, there's a market for that, guys. I know a guy called Jacob I speak to. He helped me start Amazon, by the way. So uh, shout out to him. He's, I think he was thinking about doing some kind of business around this, a prep center with this return thing. I'm not sure. But yeah, there's a lot of money to be made there. Because um, returns, they say, are the ter- annoying thing. Yeah, they come in, sometimes they're fine, sometimes they're sealed and just go back to Amazon. Not very often though, or they're in good condition and can go back. A lot of times though, things are used and trashed and whatever, and you just gotta try and you know claw back 10, 20% of your costs on it, whatever you can do, whatever money you can get back basically. Um, so yeah, a company that could do that for you would be awesome. I know you can liquidate and stuff, but yeah, maybe that's the best way to do it, just liquidation. I'm not sure. Anyway, that, I suppose there is liquidation to be fair. The problem with liquidation is you, some, you don't want to send, like with Amazon liquidation, is you don't know what the state of the item's in. It's, it would suck to send an item that a customer's marked down as like, you know, faulty, which customers do by the way. They mark things down as faulty and you'll get it back and it's still brand new sealed in the box. Or it's like it's been open, but it's still brand new and fine. Um, but customers feel like they're getting free delivery or something by lying about the state of the item, and it'd suck to send that to liquidation and you get like 10, pe- 10 pence on the dollar, you know, ten, like ten cents on the dollar, or ten p on the pound, um, you know. So that's where that kind of service would come in. But yeah, that sucks really. So you got to stay on top of that. So I still need to figure out a good system for that. I know there was a. Um, I believe it's the SW Resources guy. For those of you, you know, I'm sure most of you know have heard of that guy who did uh, used boxes. I think it's this guy anyway, I believe, but if it's not, I apologize. I believe he did, he offers a service where he'll take in some of your used items, but, and I've not experienced this myself, I'm just going off what someone told me. Apparently he wants you to take photos of the items, tell you if they're working or not and stuff like that. I mean, at that point, I'd just rather eBay. I'm not gonna do all the work and send it to this guy. He obviously, he, he wants the returns, but he wants the cream of the crop and doesn't want the trash. But unfortunately, you, if you want the cream of the crop, you also need to take the trash. That's just the way it is. No one in their right mind is gonna send you all the good stuff and keep all the bad stuff. So, you know, that's not, not how it works, unfortunately. Um, you have to deal with it all or nothing, as far as I'm concerned but some other people may feel differently. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that was an option I was considering, but yeah, apparently that's not how, you know, it uh, sounds a bit, not dodgy, but like sounds a bit, um, in fact, it's not dodgy, it's fine. It just doesn't sound from, right for me anyway. So, <coughs> so yeah, going back to the AI element, I need to be figuring out more ways I can use AI to help my Amazon business as well. So we've talked about clearing out my stock. Uh, we've talked about doing invoices, um, going on full on prep center. So this is gonna free up a bunch of time for me. I did have a reason for doing the prep myself up till now, um, but I've, that excuse is now gone. Um, and now, yeah, so I, yeah, prep center's coming on. So that should leave me with a bit more time anyway, and then I can work on using AI to help me and software as well. You know, as many of you probably know, I used to be a software engineer. I quit that and did Amazon. Um, I didn't quit it to do Amazon. I quit the job um, and then I twiddled my thumbs for about three months trying to figure out what to do and then kind of got swept into Amazon basically. So <laughs> reluctantly, I'll be quite honest with you, I didn't actually want to get into Amazon. But yeah, once I got once I got a taste for it, <laughs> you know, well here we are. So 
yeah, I need to be using AI more, you know, to help me. So that way that's be like price drop monitors, monitoring websites, you know, I can code a lot of this stuff myself, but it will probably be easier to just uh, let an AI do it. Um, oh God, what is going on guys? We're like going to a crawl here. This is a 60 mile an hour, we're at 30. I don't know what is going on. This person is extremely cautious. So yeah, what was I saying anyway? Yeah, using AI and code more to help myself find deals and stay on top of deals and just even think using AI for things I can't even think about right now. So I think one good thing I'm gonna be doing is just not if I ever got a question, I shouldn't jump onto Google, I should ask Chat GPT. I think that's something a lot of I guess the newer generation are doing now, is just letting Chat GPT all the do the work. So if you're trying to like, I don't know, compare two items, like what, you know, let's say I was gonna buy a new TV, for example, and I was choosing between two or three different models. You know, right now I'd, uh, wow, this is really dodgy actually, what they've done here. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you probably can't see that road there, but very strange. Um, and yeah, just using ChatGPT for everything basically, and just hopefully if I use it more, I'll get some more ideas on how I can use it to help my business. But yeah, trying to find some more deals. That's the uh, next thing I need to, so I've got some good replens right now. I've got some good deals, I'm in a good category. And then hopefully what's gonna happen is I can free my time up. And, God, these guys are so, wow. Really bad drivers here. They literally just pulled onto the A1 at 30 mile an hour. Now, fortunately there was no car coming, but really should be speeding up on the, on the lay, on the thing first. <laughs> Uh, on the slip road. Anyway. <sighs> right. Enough about dangerous drivers. So, yeah, using more ChatGPT, helping the business. And yeah, I want to find some more category, categories, guys. So, I found a good category already, and I'm still learning that category, but I'm relatively good at it now. Still got a lot to learn, to be fair. Um, I'm going to be incorporating some more RA, but yeah, I need to find some more uh, categories and you know i'm not sure what categories i'm going to be doing yet there are some that i'm thinking of like and there are so many categories guys it's just crazy how bottlenecked every group is discord groups are it's nuts actually but yeah you've got like let me just throw some examples out here right i'm not saying these are good categories or bad categories but just you know categories i just popped into my head so we've got things like let's say you want to do fishing stuff could be one okay um, I was chatting to a guy the other week and I was saying, you know, pick a category. I think he was like, oh, you know, fishing could be a good one. I was like, yeah, it could be. I don't know. You know, it could be a good one. You know, outdoor stuff. So, like, you know, DIY, power tools, that kind of thing could be another good category. Again, you've got to learn it. You've got to learn where to source stuff from, what the good deals are, the brands, etc., etc. coupon codes. Um, you know, then you've got, I don't know, what other categories have we got? Um, trying to think off the top of my head but I mean, there are so many it's just kind of crazy camera gear guys you know i've bought i probably spent in the past i don't know six eight months i mean all my camera gear in total probably cost me like four or five grand so do you know how much how, camera gear is well expensive i'm not talking about just the cameras and lenses guys i'm talking about all the little mounts the tripods um you know with my gopro here i'll use a dji action 4 i had to buy a little connector thing to connect it to the it's like a quick release connector thing that was like 30 quid i think it's called small rig um, now these a lot of these are private label brands but it just shows you there's like a huge opportunity my lighting systems um everything's expensive uh when it comes to like camera gear and stuff so there's a, there's another opportunity for you know maybe private label more but it could be opportunities there for oa you just don't know bike let's say bike stuff you know there's like sites like wiggle and chain reaction maybe they're the same company i'm sure but yeah i used to be really into mountain biking a while back um you know maybe you could get into bike parts and stuff like that you know um or even mountain bikes if i've not mentioned before guys one of the deals i passed up on was selling mountain bikes on amazon well i found a great deal for mountain bike very specific mountain bike um and i didn't bite the bullet on it but because i was a bit worried what my prep center would do if i sent them like a hundred mountain bikes <laughs> but yeah um there we go another item 
let me think really like car and auto accessories you know there's all sorts of things you can get for your car and stuff people enthusiasts for like modding cars and i don't know interior stuff and cleaning and all that kind of stuff another category that i don't see anything really mentioned what else is there um yeah i don't know there's so, there's so many that i can't even think of them basically golf any kind of sporting you know outdoor stuff anyway so I need to think of a good category. I've not decided yet, but I'm gonna be looking around trying to find another category to specialize in. Now, some of those ones I mentioned are seasonal, but some of the seasonal ones can be the best ones because you kind of need to know about them at the right time. Otherwise, they don't look that great, if that makes sense. So bike, bike parts might be a more seasonal one, maybe. Maybe not, I'm not sure. People still do bike in winter, but you know it's probably more popular in summer, let's put it like that. Same for probably things like golf or outdoor sports kind of things. Um, let me get out of the way here. We're slowing this guy down in his Merc, whatever car it is. So, you know, there's all these different uh, options for categories. It's just looking into what interests you, where some profit is obviously as well, how many opportunities there are, you know, how well the category's doing on Amazon. I did a whole video on like the BSR, which is the bestseller rank on Amazon. Just you know, looking at how big a category is and what is considered like how many products there are in the sort of top one percent of sales. So that's yeah. Anyway, so yeah, looking into new categories. That's the whole point of me freeing up my time. Is I want to be looking into a new category. Do I want to catapult myself to twenty thousand pound a month? I see guys posting results every month and I'm like, oh, I did okay, 80, 500 pound or whatever, you know, 300 pound profit. You know, I see guys posting 10, 11, 12,000. Some guys posting, you know, um, one of the group owners posted, he was on like 70,000 for the first three months of the year. And I'm like, wow, you know, so, and to be fair, I'm not terribly far off that. I think I've done 33,000 profit in the first four months of the year is where I'm at right now. So, so yeah, from January 1st to essentially today, I think I'm now in about 34, 35,000, something like that profit. Um, so yeah, I wanna be, you know, um, building up to 20,000 profit a month, really. That's my sort of next big goal, but let's try and get to 10 solidly first, then 15, then 20. But 20 is kind of like a, a just a, something I've got in mind for a goal I wanna get to. So, you know, I need to be starting getting into new categories and yeah, I need to get, get a good solid two or three really good categories. And then the other thing I'm gonna be doing as well is talking about these categories and getting good at them. I'm probably gonna, I, again, hopefully I can leverage AI with this, but probably not, probably have to use a VA. But once I've learned the category, I'm gonna hire another VA again and I'm gonna teach them just that category. I'm gonna teach them the sites, what to buy, the brands. It's gonna take a lot of time on my part, but basically get them good at it and then um, pass that entire category onto them and let them deal with it. I'm also gonna probably allow them to purchase as well. It's a bit of a weird thing. So I know a lot of people sometimes they hire two, three, four VAs, then they'll promote one of them to do purchasing. I think the way I might do it, although obviously I've still not decided yet really, is every VA I have will be in charge of purchasing their own category. Um, so that's what I'm thinking anyway, just to keep, I don't want to mix the, the VAs up between, you know, different categories, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm thinking. And, you know, going back to what I was saying about sort of extracting myself from the business, I want to be making sure that I'm documenting everything that I'm doing in the business um, and uh, making, writing sort of a step-by-step -step instruction guide, like systematizing everything I do. So when it comes to like reading, doing a replan, it's like, how do you do a replan? Well, first, I guess you go onto Amazon, check the stock level. If the stock level is less than X amount, um, then you can go onto the site and do a, a reorder. And then how much do you reorder? Well, that depends on the, maybe the time of year or how much is in stock or the price or whatever is their coupon code, you know, and basically build a step-by-step -step process for everything that I do in the business. And that way it can easily be taught to a VA. I can say, look, these are all the steps for everything you're gonna be doing. If you've got any problems, always refer to the checklist first. We can improve the checklist over time as you do it more and I do it more. And yeah, basically pass that on to a VA is the plan really. Ideally an AI, but 
realistically a VA or maybe a mixture of both. So that's what I'm thinking basically and I think that's going to be the best way for me to get to £20,000 a month is to try and get into two or three different categories and it's a tricky one because it's not like something you can like set in stone I guess like some categories do better in certain parts of the year like obviously you know if I have VAs which I do have a VA right now by the way guys but it's a shared between three other people um, you know they they might be doing one category for one part of the year another category for the other part of the year so obviously when it comes to Christmas perfumes gift sets blah 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 all do very well so we'll be sourcing those for Christmas and then it'll be back to the usual sort of things that we buy so obviously everything does better at Christmas everything probably you know two X's three X's at Christmas in terms of sales but then obviously some things like perfumes gift sets you know they 10x 20x in sales so that is hopefully what I'm going to be doing and hopefully all this is going to be freeing up time for me that's the main thing is freeing up time and then what I can do with my time more videos for uh, YouTube which is what I want to do better quality videos I want to be start incorporating more retail arbitrage which I've mentioned before I want to be going out doing more retail arbitrage now I'm not a big RA person however there's two reasons I want to do it one the weather's getting nicer now I don't mind doing retail arbitrage when I'm out and about and it's nice weather that's cool even if I'm not finding deals at least the weather's nice I'm out and about I'm driving enjoying myself so well, that's not really extracting myself from the business but it's getting me some experience in RA again and guys, if you want to do retail arbitrage in the UK, and you don't know what you're doing, or even if you do, you need to join Mental Picks. Link in description is the best Discord group for retail arbitrage. And they've got some killer OA deals now as well, online arbitrage. But yeah, guys, I'll be using Mental Picks like constantly for all my leads. They've already made me, I don't know, a crazy multiple of my membership so far. Um, yeah, so, and especially around Christmas and stuff, RA is just nuts. You know, absolutely crazy. Unfortunately, obviously, the weather's worse then, but yeah, that's my plan there. And who knows, maybe if I get some good RA systems going, I can maybe hire two or three people in the UK, and their jobs will be to go out and buy, you know, retail arbitrage stuff for me. Um, now, obviously, when you do this, you have to prep it and pack it yourself or hire someone to do it. But this is just something I need to think about. But yeah, that first reason is obviously the weather's nicer and stuff, and it's obviously there's good profits to be made on RA. You know, hopefully I can make an extra £5,000 a month doing RA. Secondly, I want, to be doing more, I want to build up some more content around doing retail arbitrage. So obviously a lot of, you know, it may or may not interest you guys to see me out and about buying deals, looking for deals and that kind of thing. I don't know. I hopefully will be. Um, but it definitely is a very popular way of doing YouTube for, for FBA. It's because I guess more people can relate to it and obviously new, more new people. It's quite a niche, let's be honest, it's quite a niche thing I'm doing, FBA. Not a huge audience out there, but at least people you know who are not into FBA or thinking about getting into it would be more interested about me going into Tesco's and buying a certain number of things and making £200 profit, for example, because they can relate to that. They go to Tesco's every week. They can go, oh, I could do that as well. And that's something I do with this, by the way. I want to encourage people to get into FBA. I know a lot of people probably won't like me for that because they're like, oh, too much competition, all this kind of stuff. But for me, I think there's room for everyone. You know, as long as everyone is sensible, doesn't brick the price, which unfortunately they do, but you know, it is, it is what it is. Um, I want to get people into FBA. It's a great opportunity to make extra money. You can easily pay off your mortgage every month, you know, with a, with a very simple side hustle with FBA. And obviously, hopefully that gives you a taste and gets you to, you know, do it more and make it your full-time business or whatever you want to do. But everyone's got different motivations. So, you know, that's, um, yeah, RA is definitely something I get into and it's mainly, I'll be honest, mainly for the content so I can film it all, but also obviously if I can make money of that as well, that'd be awesome. And yeah, I know there are, there are guys in America, by the way, I mean, maybe it's a different market out there, but and it is a different market. The sales loss is way higher, but you know, there's people that do full-time RA and they don't, they hire people. They have three, four, five people whose job is to go out every day or whatever schedule it is and go and source and buy items you know and they've got systems in place for that they go for replens they look for new items and yeah i mean obviously in america in america they have people in different states maybe clearing out a state for example but yeah i think that could potentially come and work in the uk you could pay someone a commission maybe um i think yeah the one i watched 
was this guy's an eight figure seller down in uh, America and he was just purely retail arbitrage and I believe he paid his employees a percentage of what they bought so if they bought something for £100 they get paid like £3 or something I, I can't remember exactly how it worked I have to relook at it basically but yeah it's kind of an interesting concept and I think potentially that could work in the UK there's not a huge room for it but I don't see why it couldn't work you know at least make some good money that way and now I know some people are going to say well why would anyone work for you when they could just do it themselves well there's obviously multiple reasons for one not everyone has the capital two not everyone wants to work for themselves and three Amazon is way more than just buying stock <laughs> so there's way more to it than that so you do need an expertise and you need to learn so yeah, people just would like to get paid. Some people like to go out and about. Some people like to shop. And this way they can get paid to do it. Anyway, miles away from actually implementing that system. But yeah, I'm gonna get into more RA stuff, basically, but said, mainly for the content. And yeah, I'm trying to think what else my plans are this month really. But yeah, I mainly wanna get, you know, by the end of this month, my apartment is gonna be cleaned out. That's the main thing. Absolutely cleaned out. Might get the place repainted actually. Um, and, yeah, my ultimate long-term goal, by the way, guys, is, and one of the reasons I need to be extracting myself from the business is because when I quit my job, one of the things I wanted to do was I wanted to go to Australia for three months every year. I wanted to go to, I wanted to go skiing for three months every year. I wanted to maybe go to Thailand or someone like that for three months, maybe Miami, America, something like that for three months of the year. So my ultimate goal when I quit my job was to at least go to Australia every year for three months. So I can go out there, enjoy, you know, I would love to emigrate out there, but it's too difficult, especially when you've got no job. Um, and I wanted to basically travel more and go and enjoy, you know, traveling and going to nice places. And I've not done that since. FBA has kind of swept me up a little bit and I've been mainly focused on building up my business. But now is the time, I think, to start, like I say, now I've built up the business to a decent amount of money is to basically extract myself from it, get the good systems in place, and basically be able to run this thing fully remotely so that nothing is being done outside of my apartment. And once I then decide to, I'll then start traveling. What's going on here? Something very strange. Got a car, oh, no, okay, mopeds or something. I thought there might be an accident or something, but yeah, there's some bikes on the side of the road. Looks okay though. So yeah, that's my ultimate goal, is to be able to travel more and go and enjoy myself, basically. So doing everything remotely, and you can do it with FBA, so you just need to just have some balls and you know, go remote, basically. <laughs> just do it. You know, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm a control freak, that's the problem, I guess. Maybe I'm, I like to control everything. You know, no one's going to do anything as good as you in business, so in terms of like, you know, or care about things as much as you. But even if you have to outsource it to someone and they do 80% of the job versus your 100%, at least that's better than nothing. You can't do everything yourself. So, you know, you learn some hard lessons with FBA, well, I have anyway, and letting go of the control and things is one thing that I've been struggling with. But yeah, I just need to let it go, except there will be some losses and stuff that happen, outsourcing things to people. You know, it won't be as optimal, but it is what it is. I can't be doing this as a full-time job forever. Well, I can do, I suppose, if I wanted to. But that's not my ultimate goal. Free myself up to do more things like YouTube, software, um, and yeah. Talking about software, guys, like, oh yeah, firstly, guys, if you have not, if you're still here, which is awesome, make sure you join my Discord if you're not already in my Discord. It's a free Discord group, you know. Um, it's a, just a, a great community of people that will help each other. I'm trying to build up the community more. And you can come in and ask me questions about anything to do with FBA and I'll give you my honest answer on it. Um, I'll help you out. It's a great community, so link for that in the description. Um, you know, software that I've built, by the way, you know, if you want to help track all your purchases um, and leads, you can use my free software, which is amazseller.com. A-M-A-Z seller.com. Again, link in the description. That's free. I'm probably going to keep that free forever. I'll be honest, I've not worked on it in a little while, but it still works, it's fine. You know, you know, I've just not built any new features onto it. But yeah, and then, um, you know, recently I've moved to, as I've, I'm sure you've seen in all my videos, Profit Protector Pro. Again, link in the description for that. It's the repricer I'm now using, I'm loving it. It's way easier to use, it's making me more money, so it's great. 
And that's another thing, actually, I'm going to mention before we just wrap this up, because I've been rambling on for a while, is I need to be open to more softwares. So the problem with uh, Amazon is, and, and software specifically, is that I guess once you get ingrained into a software, you really don't want to move. And that's where I was. I was, you know, on Seller Toolkit, even though I think Seller Toolkit's not even that great. And once you're on that system, you don't want to move out of it because it's just a load of effort. I was using SDK for my profits and also for my repricing. And there's nothing wrong with SDK. It works fine. It looks nice. I still use it for my profit stuff. But I've ditched it now, or ditched, or slowed in the process of ditching it for repricing, and obviously moved to Profit Sector Pro. The problem with SDK, and I apologise if the owner of this is watching it, but maybe this will help you, is first let me say, yes, yeah, some great software, it works really well. However, there's no innovation in SDK. I, since I've been using it in two years, I don't think I've seen a single feature to improve it that I've been aware of. Okay, so that's the first thing. The software is getting very stale. There's so many features that I've got, could list off to make it way better, um, but there's not been haven't been done or even thought about or whatever you know I can think of. So that you know it's not being innovated on, and there's other softwares come out now like Sellerboard, link in description, Skewify, link in description, you know, um, that have come out and are, are better in my opinion. Not not better in every way, but better in many ways and also they're always innovating and giving new features. And the thing I like about like Skewify, for example, is you know, I, I've got a relationship with you know, those guys, you know, they sponsor the channel with Prop Protector Pro, is they're very open to feedback and improvement. So you just need to give, you say, oh, I don't like this feature, you can give them feedback and then obviously they'll you know, think about implementing whatever feature it is or whatever. So they're very open to innovation and that's what the, the business needs. You can't be stale in this business. Amazon is an ever-evolving business for not only Amazon themselves, but sellers as well, and also you know the software. There's always new softwares coming out and if you sit and don't improve your software then other ones are going to come out and blast you out of the water. And that's what's happened uh, with SDK. It's just very stale now. You can't even do basic filtering in there. Like It's just honestly it's pathetic to be honest with you. So you know, there's so many features I could give them anyway. The next thing about SDK as well is, I'm sorry I'm did not plan on like tearing SDK to part here, but I'm just gonna say anyway, hopefully it actually gets the guy who runs it because it'd be a shame to let the software like die. Um, and by the way, if you're watching this, the owner SDK, and you wanna sell the business, let me know. Um, yeah, probably want a lot of money to be honest, but yeah. Um, it's just the support system on SDK is like a Facebook group. And I think that's not a very professional way to run that business. It might have worked when SDK started, fine, no problem. Um, but now I just don't think that's a very good platform for support, in my opinion. Again, so this is all my opinion. So yeah, so anyway. Going back to the main point. You need to be open to new softwares. I know it's a lot of t effort and stuff to move over to different ones. But there's always new software coming out in Amazon. There's always new innovation happening. And you need to be willing to move to new software. So yeah, if something new and better comes out, give it a go and see if it's going to improve your business because that's an important thing that's going to obviously help you hopefully either do you help you make more money or at least help make your life easier and guys i have four or five different software ideas in my head right now i just don't have enough time to code them but man i've got some good ones um, i just need to free up some time and hopefully get down crack down to actually coding them again so yeah, I need to get onto those really. But yeah, I've got three or four or five really good ideas. Um, so yeah, guys, I think we're probably coming to an end now. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I want to say about this uh, in this vlog before I wrap it up. But, you know, I really had a good chat with you guys. I really enjoyed this vlog. I just really wanted to share that my sort of goal for this month, everything I've basically stated up to this point in terms of me extracting myself out of the business, using AI, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff is my goal for this month. By the end of the month, I want all that stuff in place. My apartment cleared out, full on prep center, all stock in my apartment and warehouse is gonna be gone, in sent in. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be end of the month, cleaned out, get the apartment repainted. Um, and yeah, and obviously, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna be looking to travel at some point. Hopefully I'll go this year. And with that, I can then obviously rent out my apartment 
hence why I might probably get repainted and then just live on the road live you know nine months a year abroad that's the ultimate goal for me spend nine months of the year abroad which would be freaking awesome and then come back for sort of Christmas time and maybe a bit of summer as well so yeah that'd be awesome I might you know obviously everyone's got different goals and stuff but that's something that would be awesome I'd love to do um, yeah it's just be able to do that now I might get sick of it if I actually do it but right now it seems like a good uh, thing that I want to do let me speed up a little bit here to get past this guy yeah so that I think would be awesome many of you probably have a similar goal or different goals but yeah Amazon gives you the freedom to do that absolutely so and there's no reason I can't do Amazon from Australia or you know uh, Val d'Isere in France or Miami in Florida or somewhere in the in Thailand or whatever um, but yeah sounds good I just like the nice weather guys generally so yeah always very happy when the weather gets nicer in the UK like today you can see the sun's out now so yeah awesome guys well thanks very much for watching the vlog I really appreciate it hopefully it's not been too rambly hopefully you guys have found it interesting and yeah I'll see you in the next one